Hello. Wow, what a beautiful day for this. Thank you and welcome to the White House. You know, it's wonderful to be with so many friends here today. The story of the disability community of all of you is a story of fearlessness and resilience. It's the story of tireless dedication and overcoming incredible obstacles, both figurative and concrete. Who could forget the image of then eight-year-old Jennifer Keelan Chapins leaving her wheelchair behind to crawl up the congressional steps along with dozens of other disability rights activists, showing the world what it was like to be denied access to the people's capital. Because of the work of thousands of courageous people like Jennifer, who refused to be silent about the indignities that they faced, who built coalitions and unified advocates, unions and civil rights leaders, who held on to the hope of a better way. The Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law 32 years ago. This community continues to shape our nation, crafting our laws and dismantling injustice, penning our poetry and painting our dreams, teaching our children and pushing the frontiers of our future. So you all probably know I'm an English teacher. Maybe there's some English teachers in the audience. <laughs> so I want to end with the words of the advocate and poet, Susan Mesrui. She wrote, <laughs> and here she is. <laughs> Stand up, Susan. Yes. Right, these are your words. <laughs> we are not the problem. We are problem solvers. We have changed the world. Tomorrow we fight the inequity that remains. Tonight we celebrate disability, the power and the pride. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> you all have changed the world, and that's why we're here today. We are honored to celebrate your power and your pride. So now, please join me in welcoming a leader who is working tirelessly to build on our progress, Mayor Tim Adams. You need some help? Thank you, Dr. Biden. Greetings, distinguished guests. I am humbled and deeply honored to be here today with you, talking about a topic that is so critical to me and to the lives of so many others. In 1990, when the Americans with Disabilities Act became law, I was a young man. I had just started my business the previous year. My thoughts and my attention we're focused on keeping my business afloat and making my way in the world. Everything changed for me in 2003. As I suffered an incomplete spinal cord injury that left me a paraplegic and the electric chair as my mode of mob mobility. But I learned that the American with Disabilities Act was a lifeline for me and others like me. By codifying the right to equal opportunities, independence, and economic self-sufficiency, it ensured that I could still open doors or move down the sidewalk on my own, and that I would continue to be in the room and be part of the discussions 
and the opportunities for my business to grow. When I think about where we are as a country, and I think about being a disabled person, I use three words to describe the situation. Creativity. My disability means that sometimes I can't do things in the same way as others do. I have to adapt and to be creative in accomplishing tasks that others take for granted. The ADA has allowed us to imagine a world where adaptations are possible for all. Ingenuity. This goes hand in hand with creativity. Technological advances have given me mobility and independence. This state-of-the-art modernized wheelchair and the electric ramp that lowers it out of my van weren't always an option for people like us. The ADA fostered invention and transformed existing technologies into solutions for those who couldn't see or hear or were limited in their mobility and productivity. Oh, I was able to grow my small business into a national business that it is today because I could work. You see, I could travel, build relationships, get funding, meet people where they were because there were true mobility solutions for me. And yes, I have to say I was able to move forward with the dream of becoming the mayor of the city of Bowie, one of the largest and most diverse cities in the state of Maryland. Today I'm delighted to be here celebrating the many, many life-changing successes of the 1990 Americans with Disabilities Act. After 33 years, it is as relevant and essential as it ever was. But the journey to equal access continues. There will be elevators that don't work or are too small for a large motorized wheelchair or handicapped parking spaces that won't be painted properly so that a wheelchair can be lowered. But you know what? I am extremely grateful for the strong leadership of the Biden Harris administration, and I am deeply touched by the personal commitment that President Joe Biden has demonstrated to this cause throughout his career. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and great honor to introduce the President of the United States of America, the Honorable Joe Biden, and to thank him personally for all he has done for all of us with disabilities. Thank you. God bless you. Mayor Adams, uh, you're an inspiration. So many people here are. Amy and others I look out and are simply an inspiration to people not only with disabilities, but people who don't have disabilities, find themselves feeling sorry for themselves and realize, wait a minute, wait, what am I complaining about? You know, uh, the, uh, and I enjoy Jill welcoming all of you. I echo her welcome. And every time she stands up and speaks, I think about this is a woman who didn't want to be involved in public life and speaking. <laughs> I wonder what in the hell she, I'm voting for her. Uh, but, I'm not uh, running. <laughs> Tammy, it's great to see you, kiddo. You're not only a, uh, you're not only a great, great senator, but you're really genuinely a hero. You're a war hero. As Denny Hoyer, probably one of the most effective legislators in the last 40 years in the United States Congress, and a good friend. And uh, Jim, uh, you, uh, you're a pioneer in the House, 22 years, 22 years. And if you wonder why there's so many Secret Service around, <clears throat> they're here to prevent you from retiring. Uh, <laughs> Uh, don't go. I don't want you to go. You're the best, pal. You're the best. You really are. And uh, and I see a couple others out there. Who's that guy sitting next to you? He's new to the body. He knows about 
New York and bridges and all kinds of other things, but has also been an incredible supporter of the Disabilities Act. We go back and remember guys like Bob Dole and others, don't we, pal, and who did so much. Look, um, I want to thank uh, all the courageous advocates that are here, and there are a lot of advocates here, who have worked so hard to make our country more accessible and more just. Jill and I just wanted to host this celebration for two reasons. First, to celebrate Americans with Disabilities Act that uh, our dear friend Tom Harkin of Iowa helped write and passed 32 years ago. And I was honored to be a co-sponsor. I take no credit for putting together. Tom did all the heavy lifting, but I knew then how important it was. And members of both parties, both parties, pressed through, uh, through two administrations, led by a dear friend of mine and many of us, uh, the Republican leader Bob Dole. And under President George H.W. Bush signed into law one of our most important civil rights laws ever. You know, it's, it's hard for younger generations to imagine a world without the ADA. I mean, it's just, it's just impossible. I'll not mention his name. To, I shouldn't go off script here, but not mention his name. But I remember one of the things that got me in real trouble one day as a young senator. I'd only been there a month and a half. There was a senator standing up on the uh, on the floor of the Senate excoriating Bob Dole and Teddy Kennedy for a precursor for this legislation, saying, why should you confiscate my money to put in a curb cut? Why should I have to pay for it, et cetera? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it really is something that you all, though, even those of you who are not here, who are, who are here that are not disabled, you feel in your gut. You know there's just sort of basic decency and fairness. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, and remember the days when uh, none of you are old enough uh, here, but remember the days when, uh, if you were disabled, stores would turn you away. Um, employees could refuse to hire you. Employers could refuse to hire you. If you used a wheelchair, there was no required accommodation to take a bus, as mentioned already, or a train, or, or, or to school or to work. America simply wasn't built for all Americans. But we changed that. And now, for one in four Americans living with disability in America, there we changed the law. You know, it's the key to equality, opportunity, and independence. Tammy and Jim have both said they wouldn't be where they were today without the ADA. They've made speeches about that. It matters. For our country, the ADA is a testament to the character of our people, to the country. It's proof we can work together and keep moving closer to realizing the promise of America for all Americans for all Americans. And it's proof of the power of our example, an American law that is a global model inspiring 180 other nations to pass similar disability laws. And folks, the ADA advocate Jim Dart, who was often recognized as the godfather who wrote the ADA in 1990, the ADA, he said, wrote in 1990 about the ADA, he said, the ADA is only the beginning. It's not a solution. It's an essential foundation on which solutions will be constructed. From day one, my administration has been building on the ADA Foundation. My Labor Department is protecting the rights of workers with disabilities and fighting to end unjust sub minimum wages. That's critical when today disabled Americans are still three times less likely than others to be employed and often earn less for the same work that's being done by others. We're also creating a new, new job by helping state and local governments, employers and nonprofits tap federal funds to hire more disabled Americans. Our infrastructure law makes the biggest investment ever in, a, in, a, in accessible transit, updating subways, trains, and airports. It expands access to high-speed internet, a lifeline for people with disabilities to work, to study, to stay connected. And I know COVID-19 is hitting the disabilities community especially hard. The pain, the isolation, the separation, the toll on the mental and physical health of all people of the community, the loss of life. And on this day, we remember those lives lost. And we thank everyone. Everyone who is still, we think of them all, those who are still hurting, those who are still struggling, including 
those living with long COVID. That's why throughout the pandemic, we focused on increasing access to health care to get us through the darkest of times. The American Rescue Plan provided $25 billion to states to expand home and community-based services under Medicaid. So more people can live who have disabilities can live independently at their home. We've delivered vaccines, masks, tests, therapeutics directly to people in their neighborhoods. We've mobilized whole of government effort to advance our understanding of long COVID and accelerate progress in prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. And I continue to call on Congress to provide the resources we need to deal with COVID across the board. We followed up with the Inflation Reduction Act, one of the most significant laws in our history, one that will lower the cost of prescription drugs, health care, energy, and to make sure the biggest corporations begin to pay their fair share in taxes. There's more we're doing. There's more we're doing to advance disability rights across the board, from increasing access to the ballot box, to promoting equity and inclusion around the world. All this is important progress. But the second reason we wanted to host this reception is to acknowledge a movement that's not just about disability rights, but also about disability pride. It's about recognizing disability isn't something broken to be fixed. For millions of Americans, their disability is a source of identity and power. Disability pride is about every American's equal right, equal right to be recognized for who they are. It's about celebrating the progress we've made and the future ahead. And one of the reasons I'm so optimistic about our future is because of our young people. They're the most gifted, best educated, talented, and accepting generation in our history. And joining us today is one of the generation's brightest lights. I'm going to turn it back to Jill to introduce him, but God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Jilly, the floor is yours. Born blind, Jose Andre Montano learned to play piano at just four years old. Today, at 17, he's played festivals and concert halls across the world, including at the Kennedy Center, where I heard, them early, heard him earlier this year. I was stunned by his music. It was incredible. And I couldn't wait to bring him to the White House. Today, not only is he here with us, I'm excited to be joined by his parents as well, Roberto and Giovanna. Now, please welcome Jose Andre Montano. Thank you. 